This is Wicked Roadie, a wicked good podcast about Rhode Island events and life. Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going? My name is Mary Larson. And I'm Ben DeCastro. Thank you so much for joining us on episode 120 of the podcast that was voted Best of Rhode Island 2018. Even though it's 2019, we carry over we for do. a while. We so do. We do. We stay still with Best of Rhode Island. Have that it's, it's title. Timeless. It's timeless. We're, we're, we're timeless, endless, <laughs> never the never ending. But hope you're doing well, folks. Uh, if you are a member uh, like myself and the executive producer of this podcast, um, a, a full fledged member of Patriot Nation, you are very excited that we by are. last week's game. Uh, well, do you so uh, do you watch the game, Mary? Because I know Blake is is Blake's well, hardcore. He does more than he, he more than watches <laughs> the game. He he, he has help, heart palpitations. Oh yeah. Although this past weekend's game was quite impressive. Oh yeah. I asked him on Monday. I was like, "Gosh, you're just so chipper. Did you have a great night of sleep or something?" And he's like, "No." Nah. The Pats won. That's yeah. why I'm so happy. I'm going to be happy <laughs> all week. So, yeah, so, you know, I watch the games um, frequently. I this this week I didn't get to watch as much of it just because my kids were maniacs. Sometimes the kids are into the game. Sometimes they're into the snacks. Sometimes they're not into anything related yeah. to football whatsoever. So this week I was I was juggling the little ones a little bit more, but. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's something that during our courtship, Blake and I frequently would watch the games together, and um, you know get together with different with friends and stuff. So it's it's changing now that I have a three and a five year old, but it definitely is a family experience. Uh, it's it, I guess that's the same over here. Uh, I used to watch more uh, on my own, very hard, intense, <laughs> and when I got married. Uh, you know, Susan is not a avid sports fan. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if she was going to watch uh, NFL, she'd probably be watching the Broncos. So we just don't talk about it because you know it's <laughs> that just the a, a bad place to go. Yes, a bad yes. place to go. But uh, they are playing this Sunday the nighttime game. They have the six forty start. It's going to be. 10 degrees at kickoff with a wind chill what? of negative five there in Kansas City. Yeah, they are in the middle of just a horrific, horrific cold snap. Oh, my it, gosh. It's, it's bad. That sounds it is terrible. Bad. Yeah, I'm all set with that. Uh, I will enjoy it from the comfort's of my warm home. That's it, man. It's the way to do and, it. And just, just enjoy it. So, you know, that's... Uh, that that's that's how I'll I'll handle it here. But of course, you know, as we wind down, we get closer to baseball season, which gives us the hope of spring and all the fun things that come associated with that. Uh, I noticed you have been taking advantage of the bike path. Yes, we have. In we winter have. time, even in these frigid so. temps. <laughs> got to do what you got to do, I guess, right? You know, so, while it's been sunny, I'm like, I need to get out because February in Rhode Island is just so blustering. You know, there's just yeah. so much cold wind. And I also, as I said last week, I'm hoping for some good snow in February. So I'm trying yeah. to get my kids out and about as much as we possibly can, bundle them up, go out, even if it's just for a mile <laughs> ride, and then we come on back. But, you know, Rhode Island still, that's one of the things. If you want to get out, I've been able to go for walks. Now with the bike rides for the kids, the bike paths are great, and they're empty. Yeah. So if you just yep. want to go have some time to yourself, <laughs> check them out. Just bundle well, up. Well, I've even seen I've even seen people going cross-country skiing on the bike paths yes. in the winter when there is snow on the ground. So, you know, it does provide a nice, uh, pretty much ideal condition underneath mm -hmm. for the snow and then obviously when you get the snow on it it's ideal for people who want to do cross-country skiing because that's quite a workout it is in and, in and of itself so hey listen if you tuned in while you're on the road maybe you got the kids outside biking maybe you are listening with one eye on the game which you know you know i then i just question how you're 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 dedication but nonetheless <laughs> I, I judge you not because we are excited that you're listening we'll yes. have all the links and info for you on our website wicked roadie podcast.com well as matthew mcconaughey once said all right all right all right what do we have going on for this week's wicked interesting pick of the week then hard to follow up that transition <laughs> <laughs> 
What did, what prompted that? The, you actually have in the Google Doc that we read off of the word all right. And whenever I see oh, the word okay. all right, I think of Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. I, was, I wasn't sure if something happened with them recent lawyers coming out in a new movie that prompted that. But okay, well, uh, our, 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 our salute and, and, uh, and our welcoming and greetings confused. and salutations yeah. to... Uh, <laughs> To Mr. McConaughey and his lovely family. <laughs> it's the Hoods Up Weekend at the Newport Car Museum. Maybe you'll see him hey. at the Newport Car Museum. Because you know who you do see? A celebrity you see often at the Newport Car Museum. Who? Jay Leno. Always over at the Newport Car Museum, which is technically located in Portsmouth. But Jay Leno goes there because he is a massive car enthusiast. And he is he's, he's always over there. But they have what they call the Hoods Up Weekend. Mm-hmm. So when you go to the Newport Car Museum... You see a lot of the cars there, and typically they got the hoods down, yes, covering the engine because people want to take photos of the vehicle with the you know the really the sleek lines, that cool look, something really uh, just really eye catching and and you know works of art. Yeah, this weekend they're gonna have the hoods up. So you'll be able to actually look into the hoods of these cars. They'll have some VR going on with uh, where you can rev the engine of these cars as well, virtual reality style. But, you know, the Newport Car Museum, people don't really realize this this gem that we've got there. It's really cool. It's really, it, it's, a, it's an amazing space. They are works of art. You know, we talk about the car cruises all throughout the summer and mm-hmm. the spring and the fall when it's warmer out. And if you are a car enthusiast, sometimes the winter you spend it in the garage working on your car. Well, break out of that garage. Come see the sunlight a little bit here and... <laughs> Check out the Newport Car Museum, their Hoods Up Weekend. It's a really cool thing because, again, it, it's it, it's unique to have that look of the hood under the hood because they don't have two of the same vehicle. Okay. So they can't have one with the hood open, one with the hood closed, and they don't want people just walking up like, all right, I want to take a photo of it now, slam the hood down, and then pop the thing to pop it back up because... Well, quite frankly, that's not what you do at a museum. You don't go and touch it. Hey, I want to see the backside of that Picasso. No. Uh, Take it out of the frame. Just uh, anybody got a screwdriver? That's not (laughs) what happens. No. So this weekend, the hoods will be up over there at the uh, the Newport Car Museum. Something interesting. Something unique. Very cool. A cool cool. opportunity. Uh, Do it before you go watch the, the Pats game across. That's our Wicked Interesting Pick of the Week. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the Wicked Fun in the 401. This time of year, as we just talked about, when you live in New England, you probably are going to be bundled up if you're going out for a walk, a hike. Heck, if you're just going to your car, you're going to want to wear some kind of glove, maybe hat, and maybe the chilly weather has inspired you to start knitting. Now, Ben, do you know anyone who works with fibers like knit or, you know, whether they crochet or knit or anything like that? Um... Not necessarily. No. <laughs> really? I feel like you would know people. Maybe they do it secretly and they don't tell you. I mean, I got family that, that knit things yeah, and stuff, yeah. but like professionally, like... No, you know, not professionally. I d- no, I don't just know, for like I don't, fun. I, I, I can't say that, on a, that I honestly know a quiltist. No. <laughs> uh, first, you know, a uh, uh, professional quiltist. No, you know. no, yeah. So- There's the amateur ones. Uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> These are my many needles. What do they call those things? The the, the quilting needles that they use. Do they call them needles. I or, don't even know. I feel like they should be like throngs or mm, you know some uh, special some, old some word. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, people so. who like to knit or crochet, um, you know, when they get hardcore into it, they really care about the different types of fibers that they work with. So I know for me, I actually used to knit scarves while I watched the Pats games back in my like early dating years and. And my early married years before I was chasing after kids, I would sit, watch the game and knit scarves for my friends, myself, whatever. I'm not super fancy, but my mom, however, and many people that I know, they've gotten super duper fancy with this. So at the Slater Mill over this entire this weekend, so Saturday and Sunday, both starting at 10 a.m., they're going to have over 20 fiber farmers and producers representing all six New England states. They're going to be showing and selling their wares, and this is an annual event. So if you are someone who likes to knit, or maybe you know someone, your aunt, your co-worker, this event is free. 
open there from 10 to 5, Saturday and Sunday. You know, Pateka is a great place to check out. The Slater Mill is a beautiful historic building. And I just kind of think that it's very fitting that this is happening at the historic, you know, national landmark that Slater Mill really is. To have this fiber event inside of it. Doesn't it just sound like a perfect venue? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I, I will go with that. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will go with that. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So, so that is that's uh, Saturday that's, and Sunday. Perfect. And you get to get get your yarn on. All right. I like that ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to? Speaking of, uh, of of fabrics and tapestries, forever plaid is taking the Stadium Theater by storm this weekend, Saturday at 7.30 p.m., Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m., which means you'll be out in plenty of time to watch the game. Once upon a time, there were four guys, Sparky, Smudge, Jinx, and Frankie, who discovered that they shared a love for music and then got together to become their idols, the four freshmen, the high lows, and the crew cuts. All, like, so it's, it's, the four of them had 12 idols, and they became those, so just, Good luck with that math, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But rehearsing in the basement of Smudge's family plumbing supply company, they became Forever Plaid. One, it's it's amazing because they're on their way to their first big hit. The Plaids are broadsided by a school bus, killed instantly. It's the, it is as the moment when their careers and lives end that the story of Forever Plaid Whoa. begins. This is deep, yeah. man. This is it, deep. it is. It is. I don't but, even you know, understand you, all these people's names, but it sounds deep. <laughs> I, I'm I, Smudge actually uh, uh, lost fact. Smudge actually owes me ten bucks, but well. you know, I, I'll, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll forgive that one. And Jinx, I mean, geez, your name is Jinx. What, what else are you gonna do? Good luck. It, it's uh, it, it's written and. Originally directed by and choreographed by Stuart Ross, they've got various music artists, various lyrical artists there, but it's it's being presented with a special arrangement uh, thanks to MTI, not the old school. Uh, oh, that was MCI, wasn't that the old school uh, MCI, the phone company? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, MCI, Good MTI, memory. which is the Music Theater International. So you gotta you gotta give them their shout outs there. But uh, Forever Plaid playing this weekend at the Stadium Theater. Uh, it's going to be a great show. If mm-hmm. you're into that, you know, these kind of it's 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 a historical kind of look and, you know, it's it's something different. It's cool. It's not the it's not that technical popular show you're always used to. So over there at the Stadium Theater, they always got great stuff. They do. They really do. They keep you busy and they they really help you feel very cultured, wicked cultured. Yeah. <laughs> what else do we got going on? So uh, an event next week on Wednesday the 23rd. If you're just feeling like you want to get out and about, uh, you feel like you've been stuck indoors, you know, just want to have a little bit of fresh air. If you're in the Providence area, there's actually Save the Bay. Um, they have a building in Providence and they're going to be having a Providence birding adventure. So this is taking place from three to four. Just a nice, quick, free yet again event that can be done. Maybe you want to sneak out of work a little early. But uh, they're going to be able to showcase excellent views of Narragansett Bay, and they're going to be looking for winter fowl, uh, winter waterfowl, and seals. Raptors are often seen perched on fences and light poles. There's going to be binoculars available if you don't have your own. Um, and it's going to be just a really nice, great event to get out and see some of the local animals and birds that are here, especially this time of year. So if you've just been feeling cooped up and if one of your things in your to-do list is to get outside a little bit more, check this event out. There's going to be amazing people who are going to be from the Providence Parks Urban Wildlife Refuge and the Audubon Society of Rhode Island. They actually do these monthly word bird walks every single month for free. So wow. definitely check it out. If you can't make it this week, you know, there's there's going to be an event, as I said, just to kind of get out. And you're going to feel, dare I say, wicked smart after Ooh. because you'll get to see these creatures, these birds. And next time you will be out with your friends, or your family, and you could be like, I know what that was. I know what that was flying, and they're going to be like, dang, you're smart. Yes, I am. Absolutely. Yes, Something I am. Something you should tweet about. Something you should tweet about. Hashtag hey. Wicked Roadie. hey Get it? Tweet, bird. hey <laughs> uh, yeah. First dates, anniversaries, or just looking for a little something to create a spark? How about this wicked romantic happening so if you've been to any of the stores recently they are not shy to remind you 
that one of the biggest holidays coming up is Valentine's Day. And if you're, you know, not really into Valentine's Day, but you kind of want to do something different and cool for a date, maybe you yourself can become a little bit like Cupid and take an archery lesson because believe it or not or the, maybe you want to take out your lover from a distance yeah. <laughs> and uh, not have the loud bang of a gun yeah if you have some aggression you ah! can also work on it that way <laughs> silence oh my goodness well the Narragansett <laughs> Bow Hunters Club they're actually just located in North Kingstown every single Monday night they're going to be having from 6.30 to 8.30 free archery lessons free yes ah, that's right I'm all about the free it. life today my friend it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful Thing. And they so have, have you, uh, um, you yeah. know, equipment there. Oh, yeah, they have equipment. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to say, is it BYOB, bring your own bow? Or <laughs> I mean, how, how, does, you can, how does it work? If, <laughs> if you have your own bow, if you're someone who's like really into archery, you can bring it. Or if you're just like, I want to try this out, do something completely different for date night, um, you know, get active. Once again, you might just feel like you're all like cooped up inside and you're doing the usual movie night um, and you want to just try something different. It's every Monday. Every Monday from 6.30 to 8.30. How cool is I'll that? Have to, I'll have to contact my quiltist and uh, see if I can get my bow back from them. <laughs> they were using it to uh, put together a casserole. Now, so so the have you ever done archery? Have you ever done, Mary? I think I did it like, like one day at Girl Scout camp eons <laughs> okay, ago, yeah. and that's about right. it. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. I've done it. I, I, I did it a long time ago. I like did a uh, uh, I, I didn't have a bow or anything, but I went a few times with some friends and stuff. And it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's different. And sometimes they have like, you know, there's different places you can go and they have like moving targets. Oh, like very that. cool. They put it put back and forth on a, uh, uh, like a, a pulley system. And that way that you can aim and try to track something as it's yeah. uh, a target. That's the advanced people, not as, not yeah, people like no. me who did it once in Girl Scout camp. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, listen, if I've got to, you know, the bottom line is, is if I've got to, you know, do any kind of effort like that uh, to, to take something out for food or sustenance, I, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not going to eat. I'm just going to go to, you know, Dave's or Tom's and <laughs> track it down that way. There you go. <laughs> Introduce our friends and listeners to a new segment. Wicked, Wicked new. Nice. <laughs> Wicked New. It's Wicked Nice. Wicked Roadie is proud to announce a new partnership with the United Way of Rhode Island, helping to spread the word about wonderful opportunities for you, your family, and or your friends where you can volunteer in and around the state of Rhode Island. So we'll bring you every week now a couple different opportunities because, look, we, we bring you these events that mm -hmm. are either Wicked Fun, the Wicked Romantic, the Wicked Family Friendly, the Borderline. We have all these great things happening, but just in case we don't give you enough things to do. That's right. We partnered up with United Way of Rhode Island, which I recently did a carpooling with Ben with them, and uh, it was the outgoing director at the time, but they that gentleman still, Tony Maione, he still shares the... Uh, the same principles uh, and and express the same views as the new director there and and how they still work over there where you know the United Way of Rhode Island they are run by an endowment a, a never ending endowment grant uh, from uh, a, a gentleman in Texas so they have all sorts of great resources to help people with any kind of concern or any kind of issue out there. They're kind of like the clearinghouse. So here's a few things that you can get involved with. Uh, first off, you can join the United Way of Rhode Island on Saturday, February 2nd. We'll give you a little bit of heads up on this because this may take... You, you want to uh, you want to register for this. Mm -hmm. They need volunteers to assemble mac and cheese, rice and beans, and minestrone soup meals that will feed 20,000 Rhode Islanders. Wow. Families are welcome. This is perfect. If you've got kids, you want to work together, there's two sessions available on that Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10.30, and then from 11 to 12.30, so 90 minutes to come make a huge difference. Again, we'll have the links for you on the Wicked Roadie website yeah. as well. 
the Empowerment Factory. Mary, have you ever heard of these groups? That I have. Yes, Talk I have. Talk to me about, they'll tell me about this event then. Well, the Empowerment Factory, it's actually dedicated to giving children the skills they need to lead happier, healthier lives. They actually need an office assistant to help make phone calls, organize files, perform data entry, transcribe correspondence, you know, just do their general, you know, office assistants kind of stuff because sure. they really need help, especially with the grants and the grant writing and just making sure that they get all the bases covered. So they also need a social media coordinator. And if you or someone you know is really good with social media, wants to help out, especially with an organization like the Empowerment Factory, to help just kind of manage their social media accounts and published content, they would love to uh, have you contact them. You can work remotely too. So if you're someone Ooh. who likes to stay indoors, maybe maybe you like to work at a coffee shop or something, you could work at home, but maybe attend a couple of on-site events. And all they're asking for is two to five hours a week. Well, that's perfect. I mean, especially if you're a stay-at-home parent, mm-hmm. you know, and you want to do something different and, and break out of the norm of watching... I don't know what it is that you watch as a stay-at-home parent, uh, Baby Einstein or Price Daniel right. Tiger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's, uh, I always loved his watch. I always wanted the Daniel Tiger watch, but <laughs> he uh, never never, never got myself uh, my hands on that. But yeah, this is a great opportunity if you want to do that. Uh, our third opportunity is with Inspiring Minds Providence, and they're seeking volunteers for their kindergarten project, mm. which partners college students with uh, kindergarten classrooms to bring individualized attention to kindergarten students. So if you are in college or you know a student in college, they're looking for you. They're looking for those college students. Two college students and one community volunteer are placed in participating kindergarten classrooms during their literacy period. Literacy period. For two... (laughs) (laughs) I speak professionally <laughs> for two hours a day. It was just it's just weird to say. Like, I just love that uh, it was that word. Just 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 the during the reading, reading time. <laughs> just reading time. It's reading time. <laughs> literacy period. Oh, sorry, my bad. I love literacy. It's a wonderful thing. Yes. But you can uh, get more information about that. And uh, again, you can learn all about the various opportunities. You can learn about the United Way of Rhode Island, and if you're ever in need of assistance, just visit the website or simply dial 211 and get connected to the help you need. So we mentioned a couple events that you could bring your kids to, but this week's wicked family-friendly pick is the West Side Play Space. We've mentioned it in the past before, but once again, just to remind you that this is an amazing indoor space, and they have open play going on Saturday, 9.30 to 12.30. If you're just sick and tired of being at home, or if your kids are already completely bored of all the toys and the things that they got from the holidays, then you're going to want to check this place out. It's in Providence, and it's a member-run co-op on the west side where families and children can come together, learn, play, build. It's really focused for kids ages zero through kindergarten. Um, There's active play. There's quiet reading. There's art. There's imaginative play. I mean, it's just a wonderful, beautiful, happy, jolly space really to help get the kids being kids, you know, away from their tablets, away from the TVs. Just let them go play. And in the process, you can also meet some other, uh, some parents and all that kind of stuff. And this is a reoccurring event. It's going to be taking place every Saturday, 9.30 to, to uh, 12.30. So if you just feel stuck in the house, I highly recommend that you just go check out the West Side Play Space. All right, folks, as we said in the beginning, everything we talked about today can be found on our website, wickedroadypodcast.com. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And if you are posting photos from this gorgeous state that we live in, we would love it if you used the hashtag Wicked Roadie. It just helps build brand awareness. And people will be like, wow, what's this intriguing hashtag about? And they'll click it and they'll learn about this podcast. And if you go to events that we've mentioned, please take a moment Thank the people for these awesome events and let them know, hey, just so you know, I heard about this from Wicked Roadie. It's a beautiful thing. And if they don't if they don't believe you, take your earbuds out of your ears and stick it in their ears. <laughs> That's gross. not gross at all. So. 
<laughs> hey, if you're looking to get your message directly into the ears, speaking of ears, into the ears of our listeners, you can email us at wickedroadypodcast at gmail.com. Reach out to us on Facebook. We would love to chat with you and uh, work together, just kind of like what we're doing with the United Way now. That's Welcome right. aboard, United Way. Welcome aboard. Well, until next time, my name's Mary Larson. And I'm Ben DeCastro. And you've been listening to Wicked Roadie. We'll have more for you next Thursday. And hopefully Blake and I won't be in miserable moods. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Come on, Pat. (laughs) Good luck, Pat. Come on. You got this.